Now we're going to move on to the highlight of the evening, which is a discussion on child nutri nutrition's financial update. So, Mr. Giuliano. Well, I'm Hello. going to allow Mr. Crotchfeld, I'd like to have Mr. Crotchfeld uh, uh, present this this evening. Uh, given the, <coughs> some of the conversation that took place at the last board meeting um, regarding the um, uh, profit and loss statements that were provided. You mean my conversation? Uh, yes. <laughs> okay. Um, Let's be clear we, about we that. We thought that um, it would be helpful to do a uh, review of the history from where we came from and how we've gotten to where we are. Before we do so, just to lighten the, the um, atmosphere, what's with the ink blot? Yes. Somebody spilled their coffee. That's their yeah, coffee. coffee. <laughs> <laughs> That's coffee. It was a late night, you know, party night, so we put some coffee on the presentation. That's virtual coffee. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we're going to give you a little background first and uh, a look ahead at the end. So <clears throat> we want to start off by telling you some history based from 1993 to 2009. It's important. Uh, for everybody to know that between 1993 and 2005, which covers 13 fiscal years, the board had to cover a deficit in the Child Nutrition Enterprise Fund of $1.8 million. After that, the deficits continued to grow. In 2006, there was $177,000 deficit covered. 2007, $359,000. 2008, $448,000. 2009, <coughs> 293,000. You know, it's also important to note there that there's a 40 cent increase to paid lunches that year. <coughs> and even with that, that, that's a huge increase to have in one year. We still had a deficit that the general fund had to cover of 293,000. Then 2010 came along and the state of New Jersey issued the accountability regulations which stated that the general fund was no longer permitted to cover a deficit in the enterprise funds. That caused major, major changes to our operation. All right, so for 2010, and I would like the board to note the, the theme that continues to build from 2010 through 2014. So in 2010, we instituted a satellite program. <coughs> All right. Cooking was done at two elementary schools. That cooked food was delivered to the remaining six elementary schools. Operating revenue fell by $142,000 compared to the prior year. Salary and benefits decreased $400,000 due to the satellite program implementation. We had a profit that year of $120,000. So the end result was positive financially. 2011, the satellite program stayed the same. We were still delivering to six schools. Why did, <coughs> why did revenue go down in fiscal 10? Less meals served. Why? Less participation. Kids weren't buying the meals. Do we know why that is? I mean, because it's it's that's, 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 that's what I was getting. I mean, it, it was a quality issue. I'm sure that had. Okay, because I see because the, the reason we have a profit is because costs went down so much. It correct. wasn't because we had a revenue increase. That's correct. correct. Right. Okay. All right. All right. It's a very good point, and I think one you'll see continue. All right. So in 2011, we had a 10 cent increase to the paid lunch meal. Operating revenues decreased by $70,000 with that increase. <coughs> Salary and benefits, as we expected, would increase over the prior year by $55,000. We had a net loss of $23,000 that year. <coughs> not the end of the world. We had sufficient retained earnings to cover that deficit, so the general fund did not have to cover a deficit that year. 2012, as a result of that loss of $23,000, we made changes to the satellite program. We went to cooking at none of the elementary schools. Uh, it was prepared at one of the upper schools, and all eight elementary schools received the cooked food. We had a 25 cent increase to the paid lunch meal. Operating revenue <coughs> increased by $70,000, but you know, with that type of increase, we would have expected more revenue, and it didn't happen. Salary and benefits only increased by 17000 <clears throat> Net profit of $110,000. But I have a question. 
Sure. We actually had an increase in salary and benefits when we satellited those last two schools, sure. so shouldn't that have been a... Not necessarily, because uh, benefits go up each year by a certain percentage, salaries go up. Oh, so you know, that's a lot. Two and a half, three percent, two percent, depending on the initial uh, one saw a drop. No, the initial, I'm saying, we yes. saw two but more. The satelliting from more. one school to you know, all we did was eliminate one school of satelliting, so you didn't eliminate that many two hours. All right, so <clears throat> it wasn't a, a mass reduction like the first implementation. Hmm. 2013 satellite program stayed the same. Cooked food was uh, delivered to all elementaries. The assistant manager position was eliminated. So we went from a manager, assistant manager, and a secretary to support the operations of just a manager and a secretary. Operating revenue decreased by 66,000 from the prior year. Salary and benefits decreased 61,000. But like I said, we eliminated a position we had a net profit of 147000 That number sounds really good, but $64,000 resulted from uh, a FEMA <coughs> reimbursement due to Hurricane Sandy. 2014, satellite program stayed the same. The manager position was vacant for half the year. She left mid-year and um, the position was not filled. At that time, so within a year and a half period, we went from a two manager, one secretary support team to one secretary supporting and, and running the child nutrition department. <coughs> um, operating revenue decreased $45,000. Salary and benefits decreased $60,000. A net profit of one fourteen. dollars So if we look back from 2010, 2014 we were cooking at none of the elementary schools and I, I do think the product suffered right. the food was being delivered to all the elementary schools the operating revenue was trending down even when we had large uh, price increases we cut salary and benefits to the point where we couldn't cut anymore and they were still trending up we projected net losses and we were in a position within a couple of years we were projecting that the general fund was going to have to subsidize the retain, you know, after the retained earnings was exhausted. And that would have been in violation of the accountability rules that went into play in 2010. Right. So we implemented a new program in 2015. We stopped satellite operations. The cooking uh, started back up at all schools. A management team was established. Uh, we went, we outsourced the management of the program. Um, we now have a manager, an assistant manager, and a chef, along with a secretary uh, that supports the child nutrition operation. Operating revenues increased by fifty thousand dollars. That's important. We didn't have a, a paid lunch increase. All right. That to me is a direct result of quality of product more mail, meals being served, uh, more kids purchasing meals. <coughs> Salary and benefits did increase. Right. Um, there is some transition stuff with uh, current staff being retrained. Uh, so we expected a little bump in, in salaries. Uh, and we also uh, added three management positions or support positions for the program. Food costs. $400,000 less than the prior year. That's a direct <coughs> result from the Aramark purchasing power. We were averaging about $1.1 million when we were totally in-house uh, purchasing the foods ourselves through competitive bids. The first year under 2015 under Aramark, the uh, cost of food was about $850,000, a significant decrease. Um, just because they're a larger company, they have national bids and more purchasing power. We had a net loss of $23,000. So why? Startup cost, depreciation expense, Kurt, I think you'll find that really interesting, $62,000 increase. We had numerous pieces of equipment that had to be replaced. Now, we don't 
incur that cost all that in one year. We depreciate it over their useful life because it's an enterprise. So we, we pay a portion each year until it's uh, depreciated out. There was a capital investment at the high school. Uh, all the serving lines were re redone. The V line was uh, established. <clears throat> Repairs and maintenance increased $70,000 from the prior year. Again, I, last week I, I mentioned you know the, the equipment was not being used the way it was intended to be used for five years. So we started using that equipment again. We had to put some money into it to make sure you know they're operable. The <coughs> cooking me. was being done at each location. Didn't we, in fact, actually have a couple of elementaries that didn't really have a full kitchen? Yeah. <clears throat> when we had done some renovations, we knew that we were satelliting, and so we didn't put right. everything into these spaces. That yes, you are correct. So that was part of the replacement equipment. We moved equipment around to make sure that the kitchens were fully functional. Uh, the kitchen supplies went up by 62000 So we had to buy all the proper cookware, pans, knives, safety equipment, uh, <coughs> utensils, a uh, whole host of things, especially at the elementaries, to prepare the food and um, you know, make the kitchen usable. So looking ahead to 2016, current year, meals are uh, trending up. We're serving more meals on a daily basis. We've made an additional $200,000 investment into the high school cafeteria, the seating area. And you know, the student rep has spoke so you know much about it, and everybody enjoys it. It's great, um, and we're going to depreciate that over its useful life. <coughs> All other expenses are trending down. And so meals served. This table here shows the last two years of the old program. So in FY 2013, we had a breakfast program, lunch program. 14,679 meals served in 2013. We had an increase of almost 1,200 meals in 2014. <clears throat> it's important to note we, we don't serve breakfast at all schools, only the ones that are required. Uh, due to the free and lunch uh, low income population. Um, in the, the three schools that we we're serving changed. One fell off and we added a different one due to those uh, requirements. Uh, lunch decreased by 1,500 meals. So now if we <coughs> compare the last year of the old program to the first year of the new program, we'll see breakfast increased almost 11,000 meals. Lunch increased almost 3,500 meals. So again, I think that's quality of meals. Lunch, I understand quality, but why breakfast? Breakfast, we um, instituted the high school. We started serving breakfast. So this at the is high a high school. school phenomenon we're looking at. Here. It, it's a combination. I think there, the sales have increased at the elementaries that we serve at, and the high school is a big, you know, it's a big school, and you know, it's it's been a popular program. So. If we compare September through November of 2014, last year and this year, um, it breaks it down per day, meals served per day. I'm sorry, the, the lettering there is not, not the best, the font. So on average, we are up 215 meals for breakfast and 310 meals per day for lunch. So we are definitely trending in the right way. And, um, you know, I, I'm in constant communication with Jessica, uh, who is the manager uh, that oversees child nutrition, and I mean we're breaking our records at the high school on a weekly basis. We're, everything's trending in the what we expected. So, July to October comparisons. Uh, the the first thing to note, if you know, I, we cut it off as of October because we're closed out for October. Last year we had two more serving days than this year. Not a huge difference, but revenue based it is because each day represents about fifteen thousand dollars in revenue. All right. So it's not apples to apples, but you'll you'll see where we're going. Total revenue. We're only six thousand dollars down compared to last year without those two extra days. So if we had those two extra days we'd be twenty four thousand dollars up. All right. Salaries are trending down. Benefits, down. All other costs, down. Total expenditures, down about $76,000, 77000 
net loss. Yes, we do have a net loss as of October, but as I said last week, we don't receive any revenue in July and August. So as of last year through October, we were in a deficit position of $133,000. As of October this year, 62000 If we had those two additional days, 32000 So, you know, we are definitely going in the right direction. This is only through the end of October. <laughs> Absolutely. And okay, it's something so that we'll continue to look. It's only two months. At, um, okay. You know, the, the salary, all the expenditures are trued up to the end of the month. So those are, those are good comparisons. You know, they're, they're accurate month, you know, at, at that time last year. Um, you know, but we're in the right direction. We're $70,000 better than last year at this point. Over the past five or ten years, I think it's safe to say that, that we've been tweaking the program every couple years to try to patch wherever we could. Do, are we done, we think, with patchwork now and we, we have a plan? I mean, this is very, very helpful. I think this is understandable and I think that, you know, we, I can understand, you know, where you th think things would be going, but we're not going to. We shouldn't have to start moving things around our operations any further. We're kind of at a comfortable place now. No. Yes and no. Yes, in the fact that we're trending in the right direction. No, because we're East Brunswick and we never rest. I mean, well, we I say rest, but <laughs> but I mean, uh, we, we do it academically. We do it financially. Other words, we do it. We, we shouldn't. Have, we <coughs> what, what I hope that we don't have to hear is okay. We're going to start satelliting to our elementary again. Things like no, that. I no. don't foresee That's that going back. About. Okay, you know. only going forward is probably the reason. Mr. Simmons, I think one of the things that, in, in talking with Jessica <laughs> and with Joe, um, choice of menu, uh, experimenting with the menu, introducing new items to students to see what appeals to them. Uh, Aramark has been very responsive to student needs, and so um, as, as those are refined and identified, I think that's going to end up generating a lot more revenue and, and increasing the bottom line for us. And Dr. Valeski last year took... Um, several of us to different schools to taste some of these and I, I will tell you that a lot of the stuff was pretty good um, you know. and, and I, I got to tell you Aramark was reactive to board feedback on those visits and so you know critiques about the food quality or the temperatures I met with Jessica and she responded to those concerns immediately uh, you could definitely see um, those changes in the, in the food product Can I, make one more how long, I just want to know how long is our uh, contract with Aramark? It's a five-year contract. Okay. It, it's a two-year and then we have the right to renew for three. Okay, and I would assume that, um, <coughs> you know, you meet with this management team frequently to yeah. review. Child Nutrition is currently reporting to me and I'm there several times a day. Okay. Right. Because, I mean, obviously when you outsource your management, um, they actually have a fair amount of responsibility in terms of the bottom line. Right. You know, I think, and this was going to be my comment, it's been a three-prong approach with this transition. You, you have Aramark, you have us, and Evocate. I think we're all doing our part. It, it's not, you know, Aramark and us. It's one team. That, that's what we're putting out. That's what we believe in. That's the only way we're going to be successful. It's not Aramark wants this. And we're fighting with it. No, mm -hmm. we come common goal um, and go forward. So, Joe, not to bore everybody with the idea of a fund accounting, but this is an enterprise fund that's required to have retained earnings. <coughs> and what happens is that we're required to have a depreciation schedule for it. Correct. If depreciation schedule was not required, because it's not really required throughout the whole school, there would have been a profit, correct? Yeah, last year there would have been a, a profit if we didn't have the depreciation correct but. so but the revenues are supporting the operation of the business and it's getting even better yeah, they, yes thank you but then to that point we shouldn't fool ourselves to think that we should rely on this enterprise to to generate a big profit it's got to no. sustain itself this enterprise is not designed to generate profit you really wouldn't want it, to. It's designed to, if profit is made, to put back into the enterprise. There's regulations preventing us from taking money out of the child <coughs> nutrition enterprise. Right. It just shouldn't be costing money. But if this really it. made a lot of money, then that was, right. have its food is too expensive. Potentially. I'm not going to say yes because there's other factors. I mean, it's just <coughs> not, as you've seen by the slides, it, you know, it's not just revenue, it's not just expenditures. You know, it, it's a combination <coughs> of things. And, 
you know, one of the major successes at the high school, we put money into that operation and it's paying off. You know, we spent so many years just trying to survive and not investing in the program. And we were in a, a death spiral with revenue. You know, kids weren't buying lunches because it was not to the standard that they deserved. Thank so. you. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Crosby.